for an incredible night. Oh, we're taking it up a notch. You hosted a competition, mm -hmm. win your wedding film. Yeah. So why is running a competition for your wedding business a good idea? It, it's it's made the page grow. Every competition we gain about a thousand followers. Did you get any negativity mm -hmm. or feedback yeah. from you that? You wouldn't go back to Apple on the 27th of November and say, well, Black Friday was yesterday, so can, yeah. I, can I have it now? Like, these big companies spend millions and millions and millions on market and, and like, you know, when Burger King brings out a new burger, all my analogies are food analogies, by the way. <laughs> but That's brilliant. Tw 12 bookings per 750 competition entries. Hey, be sure you stick around because we're only getting warmed up. My the question mother, is, yeah. your mother-in-law works with you. Yeah. How, how is it? Oh, how long have you got? How did, how did it come about? <laughs> How are we doing guys? Welcome to, well, the very first episode of 2024. Dead exciting day today. We've got a mega dude with us. Can't wait to hear all about his shizzle. But listen, before we go any further, I've got to start with podcasts with a public congratulations Sorry, to this man to my right, Mr. Adam Wing, for winning the highly commended at the <laughs> wedding awards last Thank week. You. Thank hey! you. Cheers. I, thought, I honestly thought you were tearing up the birth of my baby. No, no, not talking about right, that. Right, okay. Yeah, and cheers. of course, the yeah. birth of yeah. young uh, Kami. Kami. Kami, sorry. I think I'd get that right. Um, being, cheers. Being family, Thanks, wasn't thanks I? for the mention <laughs> about my award. <laughs> We've got to start the year with that. I mean, yeah. well done, by the way. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, and you weren't actually going to, you weren't 100% going in it, were you? But you've ended up coming away with Harley Commander. I, um, yeah, I got FOMO. I wasn't going to enter this year, and then I got I got a bit of FOMO, like mm. right towards the end. And I think we spoke about this with Damo on the podcast. Is that it's never too late to enter. It doesn't matter if you go in early or late. It makes mm. no difference. So I did, and uh, I got all the way to second place in the UK, which is really cool. Second in the whole of the UK yeah. against some of the Highly best commended. photographers is amazing. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Well done. Next year first, yeah. I don't know. I say this every year. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going in again. <laughs> but, but I probably will. So I mean, yeah. But we've got to we've got to introduce Greg properly, mm. haven't we? Uh, so today we have another filmmaker. It's a common theme. This with James Tracy last time. Adam's buzzing about this. We've got another filmmaker, Do destination filmmaker, UK filmmaker, uh, A star dude, top bloke to boot. We've got Greg from GB Weddings. Nice to meet you both. Yeah, Hi, mate. Nice for having us on. Yeah. Nice pleasure. <laughs> I was going to ask guys to come in. Have, have we worked together? No. Carry on. So that's the end of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought we'd done a gig. I just thought yeah, we'd used the glasses. If you'd met him, wouldn't you? Yeah, no, I think somebody else had similar glasses, and I thought maybe I thought that was you. Alan Carr. Alan Carr. Yeah, yeah. that's the one. Uh, <laughs> I know. We've not met. Obviously, we wouldn't no. meet at a wedding anyway. No, we that's the same it. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I came across you a couple of years ago um, on your. Because you, you're really good on Instagram, and we'll talk about that. And I think it was your behind the scenes stuff. But recently, you posted. A competition, mm -hmm. um, yep. win win your wedding film, yeah. Um, and I saw I, I saw that. And I thought that what a brilliant idea. I wonder. And it, I mean, you had so many comments and in, in mm. shares, and yeah. it was blowing up. And I was like, that must be really good for reach. In, I wonder what the number. And I I because I do this with everything. Yeah. You know, I'm always like, I wonder, I wonder how many <clears> inquiries <throat> that led to, and like what the numbers are behind yeah, all yeah. this stuff. Um, so that was something I was curious about, and then I thought it'd be a good topic to have on the podcast. Yeah, and I mean, if, we're always trying yeah, to find yeah. stuff that's going to give benefit to our listeners and viewers sure, about how yeah. they how they can help their wedding business. And obviously, and you're a videographer, but this is this translates to any type yeah, of wedding business. Does, yeah. Anyone can do so this. So running a competition with an offer, yeah. Um, was, when we saw it and we saw what you did, we thought, wow, that's got a load of engagement. That's been a brilliant thing mm -hmm. to do. So we had to have you on so you could tell us all about it, yeah. as well as other stuff. Uh, just quickly, so have you always been a filmmaker or would you just start photography? A bit like James on the last one, he was a photographer transitioning into videography. Yeah. Have you always been a filmmaker? So my life and story is a bit of a strange one. So I've left school and I ended up doing a hairdressing um, qualification. So I went into hairdressing and barbering. I should have brought your scissors, mate. I could have done the one today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, um, and then alongside that, I used to DJ as well. Then... It, it kind of, obviously, I had a couple of barber shops, and that was where my passion was, if you like. But ultimately, when I got married, I think I'd done a story about this, or I made a post on Instagram about this a couple of weeks ago. I didn't want a wedding filmmaker at all at my own wedding. And it was my mum. My mum said, you're going to need to get one because we got married in Italy. And I was like, you know, going all that way and not yeah. having it captured type of thing. 
And I was like, no, it's already cost us a fortune. I'm not spending any more money than I have to type of thing. And my mum went, well, I'll pay for it then. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> That's what you thing. were doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and genuinely was the best investment for our wedding. And it was when I got the wedding film back. Obviously, you know, I always like to build on what I built from my relationship with our videographer. Actually, you always try and, you have a good relationship with your videographer, don't you? You know, throughout the day, you are having a camera in the face all day. So you've got to be comfortable with each other type yeah, of thing. That's the, that's the idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I remember when our film was ready and Neil from Authentic Wedding Films actually. Oh, Fitzsimmons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Um, he's ended up ringing me and saying like, your film's ready. I'd usually post it out. It was like USBs at the time before all this digital Yeah, coming. yeah. And he said, um, yeah, so it's ready now. Do you want to come and collect it? I'd usually post it out, but if you want to come and collect it, you're more than welcome to. So I was like, right, gets in the car, drives to his office as fast as I could. And as I walked into his office, he's got it, basically our film on his, on his monitor on the wall. Just so happens that it's there Just ready so happens to, play. to be there, ready to go, yeah. Nice, nice so move. He said, do you, want, do you want to watch like 30 seconds of it before you go home? I was like, my wife will kill me, but I'm going to have to. <laughs> so um, I watched Does your wife know this, by the way? She does, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've, I've yeah. talked about it online. Revealing yeah, it yeah, for the yeah, first yeah, time yeah, on the yeah. podcast. Oh, shit. Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, <clears throat> just stood there with him and he pressed pause on the film and then I just looked at each, at each other and I was basically sobbing, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. be honest. And I was like, I can't believe this is something that, I, one, I didn't want, and two, it's made me feel this way. Yeah. Now, at the time, I did have cameras because, you know, obviously social media is kind of how we build our businesses and that type of thing. So I own cameras. Were you, like, marketing for your barber shop? Yes, yeah, 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 just taking photos of haircuts. Yeah. And then I ended up upgrading my camera system because we had baby, well, we had kids. Yeah. So I just wanted to take nice photos of the kids, to be honest. Yeah. And then uh, I was like, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to have to get into something... I think it was there was kind of an age old joke with me and my wife. She was like, "You're gonna to have to start making money from this because you're investing quite a lot in gear, <laughs> yeah. and there's no return." Yeah. Yeah. And to the point where, like, you probably remember, like the Canon bodies, they all look the same, mm. except some some of the new ones have like got slightly bigger. So I get like a new camera every three weeks, and she'd never bat an eyelid. And like, <laughs> and then there was this one time I ended up going to full frame, and she was like, "That's a new camera," yeah. and I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> it's like yeah, so I'm going to start getting paid. It's addictive so, though, isn't it? And I've been yeah. on that other side of be, being stood with a couple who are seeing their video for the first time, like yeah, took yeah, it yeah. around to the house, and it's so nice to watch them watching it and the yeah, TV streaming yeah. and stuff. So it's so addictive when yeah. when you get that payoff after the wedding and Definitely, they see the yeah. film and they go, oh my god, it's amazing. Well, That's I always said, didn't I? I was one of, as a, it's a great marketing tool if you can film the reaction of your couple watching their film. Yeah. for the very first time which you did it with yeah, Ellie and Harry didn't yeah, you yeah. it's really powerful party marketing I think it's, it's got to be any website somewhere mm. that hasn't it mm. yeah but yeah you get all those emotions yeah but I've always said you know after the singer and the host the videographer photography should be the next things that you book you know <laughs> oh, obviously yeah <laughs> but that. it is really important and, and I think like you said you know it's, it's cost a lot of money but what an investment and I think yeah. so many people after the wedding regret not doing it yeah um, I think it's like so, an, it's an age old thing as well where you know, as far as like price point for wedding films, especially, you know, I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of us that aren't, it's not cheap, no. mm. but it, you've got to look at it as an investment at the end of the day, I think anyway, because, you know, it's something that we, we actually watch uh, our film It becomes priceless time. over time. Yeah, it does. It? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. And it's, it, it sounds cliche when we're there trying to convince couples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a marketing tech, but it's so yeah, true. It generally yeah, is, really the, is the thing. So. I presume you you still barbering or did you quit that? Go oh, full no, time I've, and... I've completely retired yeah. from Brilliant. anything. Yeah, I've just yeah. gone full time so you, so you filmmaking right. now. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm loving it now. How's yeah. this year looking? Like, what's it like? Busy. Um, I mean, I think I've got about thirty five in, with seven or eight destinations. Oh, that's good. So yeah, um, really excited for this year. Travel. Actually, yeah. Do you, do you cap it like set a um, year? Do you know I I try and cap it, and then there was. There's been two weddings this year, actually. Um, so on the 3rd of August, for example, <coughs> if I know it's not the 3rd of August, it's a date in August anyway, um, I'm shooting on the Amalfi Coast, and then the day after, I got asked to shoot in Sorrento, and I was like, oh, it's not going to work. And then I looked on Google Maps, and it's 20 minutes apart. Yeah, you can. yeah, yeah it's totally work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down so the I was road like, yeah, so I've got back-to-back -back Italy weddings this year, which is nice. And then um, one in... The, up, well, the back end of the year, I've got Marbella, and then there's a direct flight from Mar well, from Malaga to Rhodes. 
So I'm literally filming in Spain and Greece within the space of three days. So like I've, I've, I do make the most of it. To be yeah. fair, like yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always room for a couple, like you say, if it's if it's local to where you are. And yeah, yeah. And it's the date's free, then it's hard to take down. Yeah, it? that's it. Especially yeah. when it's abroad like that. At the end of the day, I, I think you know from, you know, I don't want to sound greasy really, but we are running a business, and that's kind 100%. of hundred percent. But I'm not saying we're in it for the money, but you know, it, it's a big part of it, obviously. And yeah, yeah. it's got to yeah. be a sustainable business at the end of the day, hasn't it? You know. I love it. This, the industry is full of dreamers, isn't it? Where they want to break away from their jobs and just go and yeah. just pursue the passions and make it happen. Yeah. Full of dreamers, matrix breakers. That's what we are. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking away from the system. Uh, yeah. yeah, cheating the matrix. I got you. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, so, so you started off in the world of wedding films. And, yeah. and we are going to get onto this competition because that's a really interesting one for yeah, anybody sure, listening yeah. and watching of how to actually run one successfully and properly. Yeah. But on the build up to this, then, how were you getting most of your bookings? Where were they coming from? Was it a lot of socials? Did you get out there and yeah. do all the wedding fairs and all that? Yeah. No, do you know what? Honestly, uh, this is going to sound a bit arrogant, really, but I didn't try very hard to try and, like, I, I did do a wedding fair at the very beginning. And I suppose exclusive. I fucking hate wedding fairs. I think, yeah. f- f- for me, they're a waste of time. Because I think I kind of sit at a higher price point. Whereas I've done one recently and the videographer who was there on the same day, he was brilliant, by the way, mm. but he charges a little bit less mm. than me. Yeah. So I thought, well, actually, if couples are... Because I think on wedding fairs, a lot of couples are just shopping around as well and they're trying to get the... They're trying to air out the best options for them on their day, I suppose. Yeah. But then I found that, obviously, if they like us both, they're probably going to go for the cheaper option in that respect. Potentially. So, pot- yeah, yeah potentially, I, I guess it's, yeah. Not, it's not, you know, set yeah. in stone that kind of reaction but that's how I tend to feel about them yeah. I um, think it's very important which wedding for you depends, depends at the, get on the venue yes, as well it does like, you know, yeah 100% if, if there's a typical couple for that venue that are typically spending a certain amount absolutely then. yeah well, it's yeah, like Elmo yeah. Court if they did an open day and they asked to go along you know you're going to get a high end client coming yeah so yeah yeah quite often the, the you know the money side of it is it's is, is irrelative you know, 100% it's, it's not well, that, and that's why I actually agreed to do the last one that I've done because I've got a really good relationship with the with the venue. Yeah, and and that's the, for me is the reason to do it. To keep the network going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I get way more out of networking with the other suppliers in the venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From doing them and keeping the good graces than I do from the actual inquiries yeah, on the day. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think if any ever had one booking directly on an actual wedding fair, they mm. always come after. But they are great. It's a great place to go and network with others, especially these days. Suppliers and get, people aren't yeah, looking network, to, but. to book their suppliers there, and then it's a different mindset now, isn't it? They go for yeah. a, a bit of a drink and a day out, and yeah, they yeah, take yeah. a few cards, and then they, they go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you've got it. to try and do something to leave a lasting impression, haven't you? Make sure they go home with something or whatever. But oh, I'm no at magic. But <laughs> 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 all right. So you don't do many of those, and it just kind of happened by accident. Yeah, really? just, just generally, I've, I've I've always been pretty good with Instagram, um, yeah, and just. I remember listening to it again, another podcast a while ago, and I think a lot of people in Instagram get really caught up in the metrics and like you've got to you've got to have loads of followers. And I always say now, if you go on holiday and you see two restaurants next to each other, if you go on Instagram, you would always choose the one that's got the most followers because you think they must be more legit, which yeah. isn't yeah, actually yeah. the case. But that's how people that's think in the mindset, today, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know, I am always trying to grow, but. At the same time, I only need to sell 30 wedding films a year. Yeah. So realistically, I only need 30 followers a year. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. It on that basis. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the quality, quality over quantity. Of quantity yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. The same thing. Yeah. Same quote in your mind there. But yeah. it's true though, isn't it? It yeah. really is. It really is no, true. Because yeah. people buy followers <clears throat> and you know, it shows 20,000, 50,000 followers, but are they proper genuine followers? That yeah, and then, then bring the posts get like six likes and they've got 50,000 <laughs> yeah. followers. Yeah, I'm sure that's for another, another day, that conversation, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, no, your Instagram's great. And, you know, I did have a look at three, you know, your it website good, and your socials this morning. And, yeah, mate, it's on point. All well, you, 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 you've got a decent following and it's growing. But yeah. it seems, like, authentic. And it's, like, you're just posting yeah. your wedding films. So anyone yeah, that yeah. does follow you, you would think that they are yeah. either interested in what you do or or actually planning yeah, a wedding. Absolutely, yeah. Like, you want... I think that's been one of the things that's worked. Engaged followers. Yeah, I think that's been one of the things that's worked for me. Um it's the behind the scenes stuff because a lot of people tend to buy from people at the end of the day yeah, yeah. and they can actually see how I work on the wedding mm-hmm. day instead of just having really polished wedding films on me grid I suppose yeah and this is so. unique because not a lot of videographers do that they just post the work and yeah. you never see like and I have this with, I don't know if you see this with photographers if I've if I'm doing a wedding and I find out the photographer's name of the upcoming wedding I'll go on Instagram 
try and find them because um, I just like to have a nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I look at the work and that's great. But you can, I find it hard to find people's faces sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. who is this person? Like, I, I want to see them and they yeah, can't. Yeah. Uh, and everyone's getting better at that. There's that whole like, Every nine posts, show your face on the grid. Yeah, so, yeah we've yeah. taught it from the very. So I've taught it. You know, it's yeah, showing your face, starch. and it's people want to know who the booking. But it's yeah, still it's quite really a yeah. unique take in videography world because I think everyone's still a bit shy of doing it. I think and naturally so, a lot of because you do it, like I, you're you're the only person that I've seen doing it to that level, like regularly on Instagram yeah, yeah. Think, for a while, um, and it seems to work really well for you. I think photographers and videographers would argue the fact that. The reason they take photos or make films is because they don't like being in front of the yeah, camera themselves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of people I speak to who will kind of say like, oh, I, don't, I really don't want to do it. Or I had one, one of my planner friends actually, she was like, I want to book a studio day with you because I want to be able to do some like talk and head stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's great. But we all have one of these. Yeah, of and, we can, and we can all just do it to our, our phones. And, of course. You know, I think that's probably where I'm a bit OCD with it because again, We've got all the gear. And yeah, I want to make sure it, it does look like, a bit polished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although Instagram doesn't allow you to upload 4K footage, that type of thing. You know, it's one yeah. of those where you always want to make it look really nice and polished, yeah. I suppose. But we do have them and everyone can do it. So it's not it's not hard. It's just actually breaking that mould of like, oh. Because I do remember when I first started talking to camera. That's horrible. My wife was just like, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, what are you doing that for? Yeah. Like you just said before, yeah. like before we sat down, I'll you know, I'll tell my wife to leave type of thing, or I'll make sure that the room's really quiet before I start recording. But um yeah, yeah it's just it's like now I just you have to get through that barrier of not giving a shit to be honest. Yeah. And just well, you it found that, didn't you, with your YouTube stuff yeah, at the start? Yeah, I used, to, I used just, to hate it and then you get used get to it. Ready, don't yeah. And and I think it's something that more and more as time goes on, something that you can that people are gonna have to yeah, learn, yeah. learn to deal with and get used to and well you don't have to but it certainly gives you an edge because yeah, yeah. more than ever people are wanting that like behind the scenes look at yeah. what they're buying um, and I think people are because there's so many nice grids of nice videographers yeah, if definitely. you can show your face and yeah. they can buy into you it's actually part yeah. doesn't it and we've yeah. always said this but yeah, if I think it's it, becoming more and more common yeah, if, if couples are looking at 10 filmmakers and they're checking the socials and you're the only one there talking to them yeah and they can see your face and they, and they get a connection with you, then you're probably going to get the booking, even if you're a little bit more yeah. expensive. Oh, I like the guy. Yeah, but I like his style. He talks, he's honest. And otherwise, yeah. you're just looking at nice film. Well, that's beautiful. But that's beautiful. Oh, but that's the guy doing that. Well, There's you, more going on there, isn't there? You'd be surprised the amount of inquiry calls that I get that don't talk about wedding films. So they'll get on the phone and they've kind of already made their mind up that, you know. They've already seen your work. They yeah. like me work, yeah. yeah, and whatnot. But then they'll get on the phone and one couple in particular... They just wanted to talk about F1 and football. <laughs> and we had this like hour long conversation about F1 and, you know, yeah. Drive to Survive on Netflix and that type of thing and then football teams and whatnot. And then at the end of the call, they were like, yeah, we just wanted to make sure that you know, I've, I've had yeah. it typically. I've had it, so yeah. many, I've had it so many times. Yeah, yeah. That's why I set my office up as, as, as I do. I've got Lego there. I've got awards. I've got things to talk about. And we talk about. Sometimes an hour goes by and we've not even talked about the wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end of it, oh yeah, of course, of course we're yeah. going to book, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. And, but that's brilliant. That's testament to you and how your personality comes across and how you've got that connection with the couple. Yeah. Even before the booking, you know, it's, sure, they, they yeah, feel yeah, they definitely. know you and it, that's, it's paramount that. Yeah. So absolutely. would you say most of your bookings come from through Instagram? Yeah, I'd say most come through Instagram. Yeah. It's like, well, that's brilliant. That, but there's been a weird shift in the last 12 to 18 months. So like, I'm guessing you have similar on yours and probably yours as well. How exactly where, you know, the form on my website is name, wedding venue, wedding date, where did you find me? Mm. And I'd probably say 80% is Instagram, 10% Google and 10% TikTok now. Oh, okay. and, I don't, and I don't really use TikTok. I'll, I'll kind of recycle content that I've posted on Instagram and just use it on TikTok. Right, yeah, yeah. But I still get a bit of still get a bit like, from it. few inquiries from okay. it really. Which but, so, you, so you are posting on TikTok, but it's just repurposed. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. the trends happen because I it was always Facebook for me. It was always a website and Google and, and and then Facebook a little bit and Instagram. It's almost like it's completely switched. Yeah, 100%. Facebook's still quite oh, good. Yeah, but, the but thing Instagram is, has just gone through the roof. If I get a Facebook inquiry now, I just it, it, as soon as it comes in, I'm I'm like mm, that's got that's not going to go anywhere. I don't know. I've, oh, like, it's so. almost got that reputation now, Facebook, where those inquiries you just assume that they're not going to be that good quality. Well, that, that's what I was going to basically go off the back of that. The Facebook inquiries I get tend to have no budget. 
Yeah, yeah, the low low budget, exactly, really, but yeah, or they're just it, fishing, yeah, or they're yeah, just yeah. price hunting. Mm. Um, and it used to be that Facebook, like years ago, obviously when Facebook was the the main the thing, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all main. your inquiries would come through there. When I was starting out, I got a lot, um, and then Instagram started to become the main place, and now it's gone the other way, where you get an inquiry through Facebook, and they are just like budget hunters, or yeah, and yeah. I, I just as soon as it pings up, I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. probably gonna yeah. I go oh come on. oh it's Facebook never mind that won't go anywhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it, like rightly or wrongly because I'm sure there are good quality bookings from yeah, Facebook yeah yeah absolutely yeah but it's, so, it shifts doesn't it anyway yeah. so Instagram's king yeah we reckon um, do you have a set strategy and we're kind of going to come on to the competition in a minute which is brilliant but do you have a set strategy with your Instagramming do you have a diary like today I'm going to post the behind the scenes the next day I'm going to post a picture of a, a beautiful bride the next day I'm going to show one of my films do you have a specific thing or do you pretty much winging it along the way I mean your, your grid looks like it's yeah it's, this has it's, been it's thought out like that. Yeah. yeah so um, what is your strategy I'd with say a lot, a lot of it is just winging it to yeah. be dead honest, I know it's probably not what you. But you know, you've got really, things in yeah. mind you want to put on yeah, there. Yeah, I've, I've got an idea of where I want to go. Like, for example, I've um, I shot one at Peckford and Castle on Saturday. Yeah, I posted a clip on Sunday of literally just a sparkler exit. Mm. Now I've got a couple of clips ready to go this week, but I don't want to just fill it with the Peckford and Castle. Where, do you know yeah. what I mean? So you don't want it to just look like you shoot at Peckford and Castle. Yeah. Ironically. Every time you post a certain venue, you tend to get loads of inquiries for that venue. Yeah. So off the back of that Sunday clip, I got like six inquiries for Peckford and Castle. And um, yeah, so that's just the way it is. But actually, I have, do the, have they and, come from people that are at that wedding? Have they come because you tagged Pe Peckford and Castle in and they got to see it? Did you ask them to be a collaborator on on your post, Peckford and did they accept? And is that how it works? So I, I, I never ask if they want to be a collaborator because I think it becomes a bit awkward if they either ignore you, go through your Venues generally blanket. don't, they don't accept it. Peckford and Castle well. do, though, <laughs> to be fair. Some do, some don't. Yeah. Some do, some don't. But um, Didn't on mine the other week. Well, actually, they didn't this time because <laughs> I used a track um, that wasn't licensed to their Instagram status, I suppose. Right. But anyway, um, they do always share anyway, to mm. be honest. Yeah, they did. They yeah, do, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I try... I try not to be structured because I think sometimes your day might not go to, and you know, especially with kids and family life and whatnot, the reality is is that I always try and plan me posts to be posted around about 6 30, 7 pm. And that's usually when I'm cooking tea and the kids are in bed. Yeah. But I'll usually get shouting down the stairs, Daddy, I've done my poo. And you're like halfway through an Instagram. Like, yeah. So that just goes out the window. So I do try and structure to a degree. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is just winging it, really, to be honest. I'll, my biggest problem, which I do need to plan a bit more, actually, with posting and the edits and stuff, but the reality is is that I'll be through, like, a, I'll be doing a longer edit for a client, obviously, and I'll be looking at it going, that would look really good on Instagram, though. So I'll just make, like, a 30-second clip. So whatever I've got planned for that day yeah. we will just get pushed back to tomorrow. But I always yeah. try and have a bank of at least five posts ready to go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where, and it, whether it looks cohesive or not, I always try and make me Instagram great yeah, look cohesive. Yeah. Like, yeah. Would you say it's a, 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 an ideal time to post on Instagram, if you could? I What I've found is that I don't think it's an ideal time. I just think your followers get used to seeing you at that time. I see. So I think if, for example, if you start a posting at nine o'clock every day, your followers just get used to seeing your post at nine o'clock every day. Yeah. Whereas I tend to post, like I say, in the evenings because I think you can actually look at the, the metrics on your own business yeah. page and stuff and it tells you when people are mostly online and yeah. mine would tend to be between 6 and 9 p.m. Yeah. Have you played so, around with that, Adam? Yeah, yeah of course. And, and have you got any... Um, well, the thing I'm going to add to that is um, I saw this uh, marketer person that I follow and she said, um, obviously, you've got your typical times where most of your followers are online and, and in, I've got that info, Instagram's similar, tea time, I think, e early I think I know evening. what you're going to say, yeah. But... Everyone's then fighting for that same yeah. air time. So, yeah, so, so post go against it. Yeah. In the middle of the Lunch day time. when it's when no one else is posting. Yeah. And although it's not a peak time, you're gonna get oh, you're okay. gonna stand That's out more. So there's yeah, that yeah, yeah. argument of well, you'd automatically think, wouldn't you, a post when most people are online, but if everybody's fighting for the but if everyone's space, yeah. fighting for the same space, the same time, then there's gonna be you're just gonna get lost in the noise. Whereas if you post off peak, then there's less competition. So there's it's it. arguments for and against. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Not saying that there's, I mean, I don't know the right and wrong. I think, like you said, you just wing it. You just experiment and you just keep posting. And yeah. obviously, the more engaging your stuff is, the more your followers are going to look at it. 
and the more that Instagram is going to boost you to them anyway. See, that's the thing. I, I'm convinced that it's in, not Instagram like can see that the I next want person to post. that posts goes to the top. Yes, yeah. it's, it's if they if they're engaged with you, they're all Instagram will always show them mm. your stuff. Yeah, exactly that. And I think, like I say, the more you post Instagram, like you've just said, I'm just mirroring that really. Instagram will push your content to the top yeah. because they can see that he's clearly spending a lot of time on our platform. So yeah. let's push him a bit more, you know. Um, so. So on from that, so you posted a while ago. When was it? This competition that you did? I always do it before Christmas. Before Christmas, why? Like, what? What? What made you want to do that? I know um, you've done it a couple. You've done it a couple of times, haven't you? So I've I've been running a competition on Instagram for about four years now. When I first started, so you do one po one competition post every year. Every year, yeah. To give away a full wedding package. A full wedding film, yeah. Yeah. Right. Which I suppose, as the years have gone on, has increased in value as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's like a better and better prize each time. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Charging more. Yeah. So, in when time. I first started, there was a lot of pushback from creators and filmmakers and photographers, like, "Why are you giving services away?" Because I think there was almost like a massive, like, taboo. Really, like, a lot of filmmakers will work for free to get portfolio and that mm. type of thing, but. I was like, well, actually, if you look at, and I'm not comparing myself to a big company like a McDonald's or an Apple or anything like that at all. Yeah. But, no, some, but yeah. some of these big companies like Apple, you know, they never do sales, but they'll still do Black Friday offers. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. And McDonald's, you sign up to the app, and once you've built up points, they'll give you free food. So, why why Not real can't food, we? though, is it? But never mind. Carry yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> but the point being is, like, why, why can't we do that as well? And I think, like, well, there's no, again, right or wrong to how you work in your own business. But mm -hmm. I just thought, actually, yeah, do you know what? If I can give something back, then I will. And I, I do I do love that element, actually, of giving a free film away because, you know, there might be someone who can't afford a wedding film yeah, and that type of thing. So that, that's, one. yeah, so that's a really nice thing to give, I suppose, as well. But It's giving back, in it? But it's, but it's a brilliant business move, I think. Yeah. When you see the engagement you've had on that post. Well, I've got the stats from this one that you've done this re just recently. Yeah. So had, you had like nearly 50,000 views on the on the reel. Mm -hmm. uh, thousand likes, nearly 750 comments, which are presuming. So talk us through the, uh, like, the how the competition worked. Because okay. 750 comments. I'm assuming that's people commenting to enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to ask a question because it would be good for the video or the pod. Go on then. Gonna say. So why is running a competition for your wedding business a good idea? Um, so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, it's, it's made the page grow. Like I said earlier, at the same time where people are looking to see how many followers you've got, every competition we gain about 1,000 followers. Um, obviously, per 750 competition entries I think I've booked about 12 of them obviously there's going to be one winner but it's brilliant tw 12 bookings are off the back of so the competition so this, this year's competition you gave away a wedding film someone won, won one and like yeah. I say that, which is nice because it's nice yeah. to do that um, but then you've booked 12 weddings off the back of yeah. posting that as well yeah and so, gained loads of followers and had and loads of reach followers. yeah so amazing from a business point of view trading your services for for like if, if if you said to me do that one wedding for free and it'll guarantee you 12 paid bookings i'd, I'd be doing it i did it years ago with a venue a person who ran a venue and they said if you can you do my wedding which was flattered yeah i'll get you 10 weddings if you do our wedding for free i was instant yeah of course yeah of yeah, course yeah. and i did get them 10 weddings so it's, no, a, very nice. it's a very yeah. similar thing yeah, yeah. but you you, you but, it, but so much more because you're gaining yeah. followers, you're getting more eyes on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So go on, take it like go, going back to how, how did the competition work? Like, what are the the process? Yeah, yeah how do you do it? How do you do it? What's what are the best practices when you're running a competition? Okay, so for me, I always, I use the same song on the video edit every year, which is an unlicensed Whitney Houston edit that uh, the artist called Caramani. Okay. So I spoke to this Cardamani and she was like, yeah, you can use it as much as you want. She's like quite a big artist now. So like, okay. I haven't spoken so to you've taken that, it's not been on Inst on Instagram. You've got that separate to Instagram and put it on. I think I found it on Love Island. <laughs> right. You've got an issue with Instagram wanting to take, no, take never, it down never. or anything. Okay. And this is something that I'll talk about now as well, because yeah. I've seen a lot of people doing competitions very similar, but what they're doing is they're using licensed music. Now, if you're trying to boost a post, for example, you can't boost anything right. with licensed music, right? Yeah. So what a so what I anything that you get on Instagram like reels or the pop songs 
You can't, can't, you can't then, boost them. You can't then boost yeah, the yeah, yeah. Paid, paid ads. Yeah, exactly. So I do a paid ad on the um, on the competition and I boost it to the whole of the UK, Scotland, Ireland, Spain, Germany, Greece, Italy. And I think I actually put like, like there's always like a red hen inside of like Dubai or New York or something yeah. like that. So I try I boost it more or less all over the world. Hence why I get like you a want lot the of... You destination. I get, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I get a lot of views anyway. Oh, obviously, obviously on the competition so there's an investment for yourself in there isn't there what, yeah, yeah. what would that cost you to boost that I think this year it cost me 150 quid okay fair mm. enough just, just for the single yeah. ad um, but yeah it, it's always worth it because it, ultimately whether those 750 people actually well obviously only one can win anyway like I said but it's those eyes on your page yeah of course as well. yeah, yeah. so then like we did actually get it was funny really because I got about three or four Inquiries for Spain, but from Spanish brides and grooms. So I was like, right, <laughs> Google Translate. Google Translate. So yeah. I literally had a conversation with them through Google Translate. Well, like say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, do my wedding. Yeah, yeah. bad accent. That no, was boring. Was that I'm gonna, I'm that, definitely cutting that. That was yeah. boring. Don't cut that. That's funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Sorry, carry on. I think, like I say, yeah, it, it, it's good to have the eyes on the page. Um, and yeah, if we can generate, and I always kind of say, actually, if I put £150 into an advert and I get one booking yeah. off the back of it, yeah, yeah. then it's worth Again, it. Again, you know if I mean? you knew that that would happen every time and you could guarantee it, you'd yeah, be doing yeah. it all day long. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so you, you boost the post. Um, but I'm I'm wondering, like, how do people end, like, how does it work, the conversation? How do you do it? Yeah. What, so, do, you, what do you say in, this, in the script? Yeah, so et cetera, et cetera. I have three simple rules. It's literally like, comment, and share obviously you have to like the post the comment is usually um i always make sure that they have to tag the partner and the partner has to follow as well so per entry i'm getting double followers okay and then the entry has to have their wedding date and venue because yeah. i have had it i think it was last year or the year before you don't want a winner to be a date that you booked for well yeah like, that's that, exactly that can't yeah. happen can exactly it, so? so last year's winner um was a date that i couldn't do so i had yeah. to roll it over yeah so that was. So you learnt from that. Yeah, yeah, that was a little bit. Awesome, so you're asking honest, for the dates. Yeah. Do you have to manually go through them all then to check which dates you are available for and put them all into the? No, what I do is I use an, um, a random. I think it's called a comment picker. It's just a, a website on. Well, obviously you can just Google it. It's called I think it's called randomcommentpicker.com. Okay. I think. Um, and then you can just sign into your Instagram through this website. Yeah. And select the post. It goes through all of the comments. It gets rid of duplicates, so obviously, you know, obviously if people... I always say if you want to enter multiple times, you're more than welcome to. You've got more chance of winning, I suppose. Yeah. But if you've commented like 150 times, it'll whittle it down somewhat. Yeah. Um, which actually, that doesn't really happen that often, to be fair, because you always get like the aunties and the uncles and stuff to, yeah, it, to yeah. enter for them. But then that's, I suppose, if, if they're sending it to their sisters and friends saying can you share this and tag me in yeah, it yeah, yeah. and it's more because they're thinking oh I'll get more chances of winning but then yeah. it's, it's sharing it out wider it's, it's, for you it's more eyes it? yeah, on your so page isn't yeah. it yeah okay so this the comment picker selects the winner yeah right yeah that's it yeah so um, it's asking the questions that are quite easy to do as well isn't it um, so, can... so to, to be valid to have a valid entry yeah. they've got to follow you their partner's got to follow you They've got to like the post and share the post yeah, yeah, yeah. and put the venue and the date of the wedding in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. You always get one where like the couple or one of the brides or will say, "Oh, my, my partner doesn't have Instagram, so I'll just tag a friend." He's like, yeah. "Well, that's fine as well. Like, you know, that's, yeah, that's yeah, great. Great. for me." Can it be an engaged somebody who's engaged, please? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that 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 has actually happened a lot this year to be on the last competition where a lot of um, brides were writing um, venue and date TBC. Hmm. And I was like, no, I, I can't let you win it because if you did win it and then you chose a date that I was booked for, like you say, yeah. you, you couldn't have yeah. it. So, so you've do got, you put that you, in the rules? Yeah, yeah. You've got, you've got yeah. to have some sort of T's and C's, haven't you? Yeah, Because yeah. then you'll get... Um, did, did you have any people like... Did you get DMs and stuff, people saying like any sort of kickback of like, oh, I've not got my wedding date yet? Like, oh, loads. Yeah. yeah, I got a lot. So there's a, there's a bit of work involved, isn't there? Because you've got to yeah, whittle yeah. out the wrong comments and... Yeah, yeah reply to the dms and stuff yeah yeah it, it, it is it is a bit of extra work but like you say off the back of it generates it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it okay so have you had bookings from it even before you've run the competition when it comes to the end and you're going to draw somebody have you had bookings before it's actually been drawn with, with or at least people inquiries. that are engaged on yeah. that yeah yeah 
so what, what, what people what a lot of people will do is they'll enter the competition and then they'll send me a DM and just say like you know I have entered but can I just book you anyway and if it, if I do win it then yeah, you know get my money back so basically yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're like well yeah, yeah, smart, if, yeah. If, if you want to yeah you can do yeah. that we've had a couple obviously there's been there was one bride in particular um, who said she's basically paid the full balance right. And she said, and she said, you know, is there going to be any sort of, you know, if I won it, what would happen? And I was like, I'll basically send you out a nice gift box because obviously you've already paid your balance and the deposit. This wedding's been booked in for like two years or something. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I so see. all your existing yeah. couples that have already booked you, yeah, they can't enter. If, or, what I, what, what no. I always say is, if the balance is due after the competition is drawn. I'll just knock like say a percentage off. Yeah, if they win. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean enough. they've already booked you, but so anything's a bonus for them, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. if they can say five, ten. Uh, if they thought about that. So this, imagine well, one of your it, brides this... who wins it, and you've they've already like paid you in full. Yeah, like, yeah. Shit. <laughs> Do I feel yeah. obliged to give it all back now? But yeah. this is this yeah. is where I suppose you've got to think it through and apply. Yeah, yeah. Some T's and C's because yeah, it's got yeah. it's got to be done right, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Do you get yeah. people messaging and you're like, oh please, like I'd really love to win it. Like I can't like sob stories like X Factor. You get a couple. <laughs> I get a couple. <laughs> like me, nan, me nan's flying over from Australia. Like you've got <laughs> yeah. to let me win it, please. Yeah, nothing that's ever pulled on the heartstrings that much, but yeah, I've, I've, had, a, I've had a couple. I've got of a celebrity ones, at the yeah. wedding. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You will. Um, <laughs> so uh, you, to advertise it obviously you posted it on Instagram you put a paid ads on it to get yeah. the, the reach and yeah, the yeah. eyeballs does it then just tick over itself because people are engaging with it yeah yeah so I've always found that it's hard with competition well I think it's hard with Instagram generally speaking because I believe that if you've got a post that's doing relatively well the minute you post something else the focus has gone off that because Instagram don't need to push that anymore because you're yeah. now pushing out all the content. Yeah. Mm. So I always post the competition in December because December is usually a quiet month for bookings anyway. Mm. And then it's laid the groundwork then for January because January is a busy month for bookings. So the ones that haven't won it, you're already in conversation with them coming into January. Yeah, so you've got so it ready. I think from it's like, already established. Yeah, yeah. So I think from the third out. of January till the sixth. That's when I took like, I think I took like eight bookings in that week. Yeah. And I was like, shit, this is a bit mad, you know what I mean? In fact, mm. it's a bit, bit hard to keep hold of really, you know, or keep on top of, should say. But um, yeah, like you say, you've laid the groundwork in December coming into coming into January, where I've seen a lot of people doing the competitions and not necessarily replicating what I do, but a lot of competitions have given away very similar. And they're doing the competitions in January. I'm like, Why? You don't need to do it in January because January is quite a busy month for bookings anyway. Mm. I mean, you could argue the fact and say this year has not been as busy because I think people are a bit more, you know, they're yeah, a bit more been, careful with money and bookings one, and stuff. It? Yeah, yeah. But if you do it right, you can generate them leads anyway, you know? Mm. Yeah, okay. Is there a time frame on it? What, what's the what's the right amount of time to actually run it for? Because you can't so, let it go for too long because you want to keep the interest there, yes, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, found, I found two weeks okay. is probably... That's probably a little bit too long as well, but again, with December, it's quiet. So people have got nothing to really think about and worry about anyway with weddings because Christmas is coming and that type of thing, and they're not really looking at booking. Yeah. But again, if you're boosting it with a boosted post, you'd be probably sat there yourself. You'd be sat on the couch and your missus will go, oh, your post has come up again. You know, so yeah. it just comes up quite frequently. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're putting like, if you're targeting it in the right places, it will just keep flashing up anyway. Do you boost, you said you boost it for one week. Do you do it the second week or the first week? Oh, but I boost it for the whole 14 days. Oh, you do yeah. it for the whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 150 quid spread out over two weeks? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, basically, yeah. And I mean, that's like you say, if that gets one book in, it's nothing, is it? Like 150 Yeah, yeah, now. exactly, yeah. Um, and I said, it's a way to get new followers as well, new people seeing what you do as well, isn't it? Rather than just posting it out without, <laughs> without a boost. I mean, we're talking about new followers as well on the page. What is funny is, the minute the competition's ended and they all a lot of you? these people who haven't won, a lot of will, will unfollow. Okay. A lot of the brides will stay following but it's usually the grooms who are like, I don't want to look at wedding content all day. Yeah, yeah. I want to look at BBC Sport or Sky yeah. Sport or you know, okay. that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so, interesting, yeah. Because it's not necessarily that you're going to maintain all those followers. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But, but we always find that you only tend to lose about 5% tops. So you, know, you might lose like 200 followers but at that point, I've already, you've gained, I've already hit the extra yeah, thousand, so yeah, like, yeah, you know, to lose 200 is fine, really. Yeah, and especially if they're already engaged and they've, they've followed you and they've entered it, but then you post in anyway, and they, they're like, well, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm still interested in wedding stuff, so yeah, yeah. even though I didn't win, like you said, people booking you, I'm, by this point, I've already seen your stuff, I actually 
already like like what I've seen. Yeah. So probably going to book anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that. So when the competition finishes, yeah, you've still got that post on your grid there. You've got all them comments, which has got all the names of brides, potential brides, and the friend. When the competition is over, somebody's won it. Do you do anything else with that post? Do you go along and do you, do, you, do you message everybody and say, you didn't win, however, I'm still available, I might give you a discount? Yeah. Do you, what happens after that process? So I always offer a percentage off after the competition. Um, it usually tends to be between 5 and 10%, depending on, obviously, if a destination one comes in. Yeah. I will offer like a little bit more discount because you know they've naturally got to pay for flights and accommodation and that type of thing. But I always do like a post, a story post for twenty four hours, and I'll do it over like three days. So I'll do it for twenty four hours, leave it. Third day, do one again, and then on the fifth day, do one again. I'll just talk about the percentage off. If you're interested in a percentage off, drop me a message, and then we'll talk percentage. So you'll follow up with a few stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you don't DM everyone. No, I, I wouldn't DM. It. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean that that's. It'd take a lot of time. That's the it would take a lot of time. People, so, yeah. And it's but, potentially a bit pushy versus just offering yeah, yeah. stories and they That's get in touch with you. So yeah. I found that, again, when there's... I mean, it's making sure that all them people see that story, though, isn't it? I'm wondering, could you not yeah. Could you not leave a comment actually on your competition post at the bottom of it for all that you didn't that didn't win? Yeah, I'm yeah. Winning a competition. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm doing a percentage off. Yeah, yeah. Have you done that as well, or have you just no. followed up with the story? No, because I, I think at that point, if you were to offer 750 people discounts it's it's a big chunk isn't it so i've found that like just keep, just keeping it low key and just putting it on the story letting them know that the offer's there if they want it yeah and then obviously if they yeah. want to get in touch then they I'm, will i'm wondering do, do you find then that like alienates your existing couples because they're like well i never got discount do you get any negativity mm, or uh, yeah, yeah. From no, do you know what no I, I, i've never had anything Anything like that, really? Like, I, I, I paid full price, why are they getting discounts? Sort of, sort yeah, of yeah. Thing. Well, what, what I tend to do, again, rightly or wrongly, um, the competition ends in December. My new pricing structure goes in place from the 1st of Jan. So anyone that gets discounts, they're actually paying more than what my existing clients would have paid anyway. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Got it. So actually... Yeah. I have actually, I did have this conversation that, actually. You with could one easily of the alleviate those That's people. That's one way to alleviate. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Yeah. But I did have okay. a conversation with the bride actually, and she said exactly the same. She said, you know, can I have discount? And I said, well, the discount that I'd offered these couples is actually still more On than what you paid but, anyway. Yeah. 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 So, and she she understood and she was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, and at the end of the day, you, you, it's your business, run it how you want. It's not yeah, like absolutely. You're yeah, it. yeah, like, yeah. You're perfectly. Um, well, like I said, talking about bigger companies, you wouldn't go back to Apple on the 27th of November and say, well, Black Friday was yesterday, so can, yeah. I, can I have it now? Exactly. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so it's, it's kind of suppose, accepted, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but I suppose because Instagram is so, and I make myself so accessible on Instagram and, you know, anyone can DM me and whatever. In fact, even to the point where I've got my phone number on there for WhatsApp and, you know, get mm. inquiries through that as well. But because you are accessible, people yeah. then think that actually, I'll just drop them a message and just ask them. But like I said, you wouldn't message... Rather yeah. McDonald's and say, well, actually, well, it's the same with, our, with our online course that we sell. You know, sometimes run discounts on that, and then it goes back to full price. And yeah, so we get a lot yeah. of people buy at full price. They don't ever come back. So, well, yeah, can yeah. I have it for the price you did? Yeah, well, definitely. No, yes. because, no, it doesn't. But yeah. and it's just accepted, isn't no, you're it? Right, so we, don't, yeah. we don't get yeah, that. Hundred um, percent. Right. So we we get how you structure the post. I talk about the music. We've talked about the music as well. What about the action? Is it an image that you do, or is it a little bit of a film that goes with with the post on the competition? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, quite simply, that the the post, mm, the video post will just be um, say ten clips of last year's weddings, basically. Moving bit like a, a film rather yeah, than still. Yeah, it's, it's a mini film. It's like a mini trailer, I suppose. Yeah. Mini trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah a little. Um... Montage of clips from yeah, pretty much yeah. Yeah, because I was going to say, well, it doesn't matter as long as you post a, a put a post on. It doesn't matter what. But it's it says. a filmmaker in it, so you but, think some really but you're right, clips like of yeah, an yeah. engaging image to go along with the the text underneath. Yeah, yeah. Like will have a play a part in the engagement, won't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I, you, is it done as a post, not a reel? Post, post, always a post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've got told a while ago that you get more engagement with reels, but. Um, but yeah. no, I think it needs to be structured as a post, as doesn't it? Anymore. Yeah. Did Did you um like try and get any anyone to share it, like venues, other suppliers, or anything like that? No, and this is kind of where it's been really nice, actually. Like I, I didn't ask anyone to do anything. 
and the venues would naturally share it because they're saying, well, actually, if I've got a good relationship with them, you know, yeah. you know, a lot of venues yeah. wouldn't share it because they don't know me, obviously. Yeah, but, but the your ones network, got, your photographer yeah, yeah, friends yeah. and stuff. And a lot of photographers will share it and say, yeah. like, oh, you know, we, we know Greg and it's an amazing prize and that type of thing. So, yeah, people just naturally share it anyway. Especially if they've nice. got a couple, like, because photographers will have those conversations with their couples of, yeah. like, are you getting a video? And the couple go, no, I'm not sure, like, budget and stuff. And yeah, then exactly, they go, yeah. oh, well, if you're yeah. not if you're not gonna buy one, there is a guy doing a competition. Yeah, exactly. Enter yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. Mega. I, I feel like I want to go and do a competition now, but wait do I need to wait till next December? <laughs> wait, wait till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I could personally do it because it, I'd be so worried about who would win it, and are they the right couple for me? Because I work so closely to my, with my couples, but also the venue they've chosen. There's so many that I can't work at. Yeah. Because of sound restrictions, etc. Right. Because a lot of venues that I don't say a lot, there's a few. Yeah, yeah. But I'd hate it to be somebody who wins it and then me say, actually, I can't work at your venue because of X, Y, Z. Yeah. And I'm going to give myself problems. But I think photography or video or, or anything else other than probably yeah, what I, I mean, do would be fine for yeah. it. Yeah. I get it's tricky, but you could always put that in your T's and C's and just roll it over to the next one, the next one, the next one, and just be really strict with you. But I'd have to put in, right, if you've booked these venues, please don't enter. Yeah. Because I can't I work certainly there, think but. for. Hair and makeup, florists, yeah, yeah. like yeah. there's loads of suppliers that dress could do this, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's like other than I mean maybe floristry is different because you're having to spend a lot on the actual yeah product, yeah. whereas us it's just our time, isn't it, that yeah, you're giving yeah. away really. I, I think, think if I it think works out right as well, you can you can actually get engaged with a new venue. Say if it's if you're lucky, it's yeah, somebody yeah. books you who's a venue that you really wanted to work at, yeah. And it happens to be that venue that we wins it. That's great. Yeah. Because you've got an into another venue then, haven't you? Yeah. I think from your other point, though, is that we pride ourselves on building relationships with our clients and to pick someone who you've never met or, you know, that type of thing. So that that's always a, a daunting thing, really, because yeah. you might let someone win it and yeah. then they go, oh, God. Like, they might not... I mean, obviously, you know, it could be reversed. I might not like them, but they might not like me. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So you think, well, actually, this is going to be super awkward. This. So yeah. Yeah. I, I think like, the beauty yeah. of your posts and what you do, how you present yourself on Instagram, I think the people that are going to go in your competition would look at you and, yeah, this guy's. Uh, yeah, I think because you're you transparent know, you're on your feed, they'd, they'd, you'd think they'd look at that before they enter. It's like yeah. they, if they um, already know a little bit about you, be probably before they enter. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I do like this guy. Yeah. Because if they great. decided that you weren't the person that they'd want, they wouldn't enter. They probably wouldn't enter anyway. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. I mean, there is the fear of that people just like like free shit, don't they? So it's like, they, yeah, they might, they and might you just blindly enter, enter yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it gets yeah. the day, and you just don't gel, yeah, and yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, should we talk? <laughs> yeah. We've we've got somebody somebody who wins it. He was obviously going to be a great client, possibly a new venue. Brilliant. That's going to lead to a new potential network yeah, yeah. and then you, you've got bookings off the back of it like you said you had three bookings off the back of it did you, did you say three? 12 sorry 12 sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, we've glossed over the numbers so you did the you did the competition it ended somebody won it um, how many did you track the like the inquiries and the bookings that you got off the back of, so you got 12 bookings 12 from bookings it. yeah I mean, how many inquiries did you get oh, I mean it's 20 plus to be honest yeah. um, just from one post like you know, yeah, that's yeah. all it is really yeah yeah day. I think, to be honest, I'd like to think that my, again, I, I'm quite transparent with the clients. I mean, I'm quite transparent on Instagram, but I'm quite transparent with the clients as well, where if they ask me questions, I won't kind of hide them or bullshit them. I'll just tell them exactly how it is or how I feel. Yeah. Um, right, again, rightly or wrongly, by the way. But I'd like to think that, I, this might sound arrogant, and I don't mean it to be, but I've got a relatively good um, like booking rate through inquiries. Mm. So I'd like to say that most people who inquire, because I give them the information back straight away, yeah, they've made their mind up more or less. You know yourself, if, yeah. like, if you're sending packages back, it's just a case of like, well, if the package fits the budget, great. You know, we want to book. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got a good rate of kind of in that yeah, respect yeah, as well. Process, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, there's no kind of bullshit or pushback, you know? Yeah. All those 12, those 12 bookings off the back of the competition, did they all get the disc, did they book? off the discount sort of no because the discount ran out on New Year's Eve right okay so they just so that's anyway. how you do that there's a time okay. frame on the discount as well oh, well that, that also creates a bit of sense of urgency doesn't it as well with people yeah for sure uh, but then it just goes to show that like I mean probably the mindset of so, certainly some of them will have been oh well I'll just enter and then if I don't win it, I'll just book him anyway because yeah, yeah, I yeah. want him. Yeah, yeah. But they wouldn't have found you unless they'd come across the, competition, the competition in the first yeah. place. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's cost you under 50 quid. You've gained all the extra followers. You've got 12 extra bookings. 
Brilliant. Have you had the same success with previous competitions that you've done? Is this the fourth year you do it? This is the fourth say? year I've done it. Yeah, and um, and what, and what have you learned from the early ones to ones you've just the one you've just done? That's to be grand, honest, so. the, the formula is exactly the same. Yeah, I just boost it to further afield now. Okay. Right. Um, obviously, being further afield means that you get obviously you know more, yeah. a, a bigger I've, audience. It's in a shift in your fit, uh, feed of you're des- doing a lot more destination now. Yeah, as well, so yeah. So you, you're trying to like. Bra- what uh, broaden your net overseas? Yeah, yeah, and get more of that. Yeah, destination is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Destination yeah. ones um, for the if they win, yeah. do do they still get f- everything free? Or do they? <gasps> they, have to pay, they have to pay fifty percent of the package. Right, so that's a different because you got to cover your travel different prize if the destination. Because yeah, yeah. yeah so, well, I was thinking like so then you're the, taking the hit on the travel yeah, as well, aren't you? So the destiny one of the destination um, one of the brides won was a destination wedding about two years ago and she won it and I just DM'd her straight away and I was like listen like you know full transparency again in the terms and conditions which I have previously posted on stories yeah, and whatnot by the way so it's not like I, again here's it um, I just said to her I said listen again full transparency you owe me 50% <laughs> of, the, yeah. of, of the value yeah. Yeah. If, if you don't want it and you kind of don't want to run with it then We'll just, I'll roll it over and give it to someone else so that's fine but we'll roll you've, it again. you've won yeah. it so yeah. I'm just letting you know yeah and they're still getting a massive is discount is that 50% yeah. of your fee plus travel expenses or? no because my, my, my fee includes travel so, so you've accounted for everything I and yeah. half price yeah yeah so I think in that respect it works out better for them because I, I found that over the years if you say your fee plus travel they start then looking for cheaper flights and cheaper hotels and I'm stuff. The, I do I, yeah, 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 I yeah. work it out and just um, give them a price with everything. Yeah, yeah. I've so done. I've then done the you same. can control yeah. where you stay in and when, yeah, yeah, when you exactly, fly. Yeah. The only yeah. time I didn't do that was when I had that wedding in Bermuda, which I couldn't do unfortunately because it was right in the middle of the COVID bullshit. But they uh, picked yeah, yeah. me. I let them do it. They got the flights, but then they were really good flights, and and they booked this Airbnb right on the beach. And I thought, yes, we'll definitely have. Well, that. this is it. Occasionally, no with destination ones, they go right. We want to book you, and we've already. Like we'll 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 sort your room out in our hotel, sort of thing. Yeah, and then yeah. you look at yeah, it and you go, yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair yeah. Fair enough. But um, but it's still nice to have that control, isn't it? So well, I think yeah. that that all stemmed from a bit of a funny story, really. My second ever wedding inquiry was for Spain, and at the time, like I literally went to the couple's house to meet them, and I was like, uh, yeah, I was just like a pig and shit. Basically, I was made. I was like, I can't believe this. This is yeah, my job yeah. now. Like I'm going to Spain to film someone's wedding. This is weird. So anyway, goes to the house and. Uh, massively undercharged, <laughs> massively undercharged, and uh, they were like, "Yeah, so what we'll do is, you know, we'll we'll pay you, or we'll book the Airbnb and your flights for you, and that type of thing." It's like, "Yeah, fine." So, guess to Spain. Now, bear in mind, I'm dressed probably similar to the way I was when I got to Spain, like full black tracksuit type of thing. It's yeah. 35 degrees. I'm sweating me fucking tits off. <laughs> you went uh, to Spain in a full black tracksuit. Well, it was freezing cold <laughs> in England, so okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean, you know, stupidly <laughs> by the way, but yeah, I did. They have like shorts underneath. You could just whip them. Oh, well, me boxes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, gets to the Airbnb, and it was this uh, apartment complex in the middle of Marbella. It was really, really nice to be fair. So get to there, and because she booked it all, I was like. Shit, I'm gonna have to speak to the bride. So I spoke to the bride. Well, tried to speak to the bride actually, yeah. and it turns out that she was at a pool party on a Hindu. So uh, I was like, right, this is a pain in the ass. Can't so, check in because it's, it's so, awkward. You're like, well, I'm I'm staying here, but um, I don't know what name it's under, and uh, yeah. it's not my card. So like. she ended up sending me a Facebook login, <laughs> logged into her Facebook account because that was what her Airbnb was connected to, and I had to speak to the guy who owned the property who happened to be on business in China. So with the time difference, I've woke this guy up, oh, and I'm no. like, mate, I'm really sorry, can you let me in? And he's like, who are you? I was like, oh no, never again. So I was like, from then, I'm just going to do yeah. it all myself. And yeah, like you yeah, said, you know yourself, it's it's a bit more stress-free, isn't it, if you do it yourself. Yeah. You know where you're staying, you know your board and passes on your phone and that yeah. type of thing, so yeah. there's that. Just going back a little bit, so have you had similar success then with all the competition you've, you've run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say, like I say, I think the first competition, I think probably put about... 20 quid behind it and like boosted the post with 20 quid which you know didn't get seen by that many um so you've learned that the more you, you the more you boost it yeah i mean i suppose yeah. it's you know that that 20 quid turns into i think i got like two bookings off the back of the first competition yeah so actually like i said earlier really if i get one booking yeah it's still a win isn't it of course it is yeah. so i think it's- like yeah it's great, and it's this is partly why I wanted to like get you on the podcast and share it with our yeah, audience yeah. and that because it is, um, 
I mean, obviously, it's just been so great for business for you, and it's yeah. something that a lot of people would probably poo-poo and go, yeah. "Oh no, I can't can't do that." Like, yeah. um, you know, you see a lot online of like, oh, you don't need to pay for advertising, you don't need to offer yourself for free, like. But it's, you, ba- it, you're worth- it's back to my like. Sorry to interrupt, but it's back to my kind of analogy of like these bigger guys, like these big companies spend millions and millions and millions on marketing and, and like you know when Burger King bring out a new burger. All my analogies are food analogies, by the way. <laughs> Have you like, noticed that? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you tell I'm on a diet? He brought <laughs> chocolate. January. He's mentioned McDonald's, Burger <laughs> King. It's so bad. It'd be KFC. Okay, it'd be Landers coming up. So. Let, let me say Coke then. So Coke bring out a new drink. <laughs> Yeah, and that's they will spend, different. Yeah, yeah, they all spend out. I know, yeah, that's. I know, yeah. <laughs> but I get, I get your point. Yeah, they spend yeah. a lot of money on marketing. But then, I, you, you again, you see it yourselves. Are people on Instagram now? They're like, oh, look, I pride myself on you know organic reach. You're like, but these companies don't have organic. Yeah. I mean, obviously, everyone knows what Coca Cola is, mm. but they still spend a shit ton of money on marketing. It's, I think it's a bit of a, yeah, and You'll see this do, in, yeah. in videography, especially the videography part of wedding industry. There's a lot of like artists and egos that are like no no oh, I, it's, like, it's a massive stigma I, I yeah. demand to be I want to be commissioned for my art and pay charge full price and stuff <laughs> it's and, and, and they well, lose that. sight of it's a business yeah, yeah and it works for we had Sam Fitton magician on one of the episodes and he said the same thing these yeah. companies Apple McDonald's Primark are used they spend millions a year on yeah, advertising yeah, yeah. use that use then well, what, yeah. it, what they do works for them, multi, multi-million company, yeah, yeah. dollar company. Try and bring it into your own business like, and, yeah, and emulate it, it a little bit. Why well, not? they're always yeah. running competitions, aren't they? Of course they are, yeah. Always, I mean, there'll Ma- always yeah. be a you competition. Say McDonald's, but everyone will relate to the Monopoly, McDonald's Monopoly course, thing. yeah, yeah. That, that goes mega every yeah. year. Loads of people, like, it blows up, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that's why they keep doing it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, it works. Yeah, do, yeah. do you get any um, negativity from, I, we've, I've, I've asked you about, like, couples and... and um, people entering like yeah. they, they might get the hump, but from a specifically from other suppliers, do you get like other videographers going, oh, not lo- don't like that you're doing that. Like you shouldn't be you look you yeah. lower in the industry sort of thing. So the first competition I did, and I got a lot of messages off them, kind of. Because uh, I know full well the type of messages. You yeah, get, yeah, you know? yeah, and I got a lot of people, and and to be honest, the, I think the problem was with that. Was that I'd not been in the industry very long either. Mm. I don't even. Right. Like, Is this new guy see, coming yeah, in and offering yeah, everything? Yeah, out yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So that Which was is interesting. wrong attitude, by the way. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I, I can't say I, I agree with it, but you know, I can kind of see from an artistic point of view, like you said. So that was funny, um, but yeah, no. After that, um, everyone just has replicated what I do now. And, it's great, you know. Like, it, that's it, the in a way, I, I love it. I, I really do because. And I get sent it all the time. I get like obviously friends who aren't in weddings, and they'll send me a screenshot of someone else's competition. And like, I oh, see, even to the point where some filmmakers have actually used the same font and the same colours and stuff. Couple, and like, I've seen a couple yeah, yeah. crop up this year, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if that's this. There. This reminds me of a story. I remember when I when I won the wedding awards, yeah, yeah. The, the national, you know, the first time I won the national, and this, I, I remember seeing people on Instagram and Facebook saying, "Oh, these awards, I don't need to win awards to do this." and Negativity, negativity. I remember seeing the next year one of those people actually entered the wedding awards. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. You slagged it off, yeah, yeah. saying it's a load of bullshit. You know, it's fake, it's rigged, which it, it isn't, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then to see them come full circle and start doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know, some it, it's just some people just do it, it is, sometimes, it aren't funny, they? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Massive. It really, yeah. it's great that you 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 know doing it and it's working for you because, like I say, I, I would have again maybe because of industry kind of mindset I yeah. would have just assumed that it's something that's great to do at the start but once you get established you don't really want yeah, to do it because yeah, yeah. you, you know you're offering yourself out for free when you don't need to yeah yeah that kind of attitude um but then see someone successful and established like you then doing yeah. it and doing it well then like Brilliant. yeah it's, it's great, it's great. Why, would you well not, why would you not consider well it done. Yeah. I mean it made me go oh, I want to do one I want to. Yeah, and yeah. that's why like that's the reason you're sat here now because I saw yeah I saw yeah. you doing it successfully I think I, to I the thought, point let's... where like obviously going into 24 now the brides expect to see it at Christmas now, so I do get. I got him a couple of messages in around October because I'm done with them. I'll, I'll tease. I'll, t- I'll take like a screenshot of me my computer saying like it's coming, and if I was like, yeah, oh that's my God, brilliant. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, and it's yeah. just trying like teasing them. Kind and of it's like that Black Friday thing. It's yeah, every, yeah, same yeah. time every year. Yeah, people look forward I to it. I suppose that's exactly. the thing. Yeah, we need probably need to touch that. Then. So prior to the the competition starting, then what is that process? Are you? Are you there daily or weekly putting posts up saying yeah. it's coming soon? It's coming. It's just yeah, I, I just do like I'll I'll do like a little poll usually like a couple of weeks before, 
saying anyone fancy a competition? And obviously, you know, no one says no unless it's me mother in law. Yeah. Um but yeah, everyone always says yeah, obviously. And then, you know, I'll take like say screenshots of mm. my computer or like, you know, when I'm editing the the, the the new post type of thing. Say like, oh yeah, it's coming soon, coming soon and that type of thing. So when it comes, it's not actually a, a surprise really. But I think that kind of that sometimes can shoot you in the foot. And I don't like again from an artistic point of view, I don't like to be like, Oh, look what I've got coming soon, you know, that type of thing. Okay. But but people do want to know and actually the engagement on stories like which i found insane actually the insane the, the story views now off the back of the competition like i'm, I'm averaging like and i always believe that you, you don't want to post shit if you post shit people aren't gonna just just gonna turn it off or yeah. swipe away or whatever yeah. but if you post value people will just naturally want to see it more yeah. so like my story views off the back of the competition i'm getting seen by about like 1500 people on a pair story mm. which i find insane by the way do you know what I mean because like you can post something random yeah. like you post a photo of yeah. a McDonald's and, that, and that's, and you know, that's go, a great oh, way to like <laughs> just, <laughs> you know what I mean show yourself and like and get them to engage with you the person but, behind the scenes but I think that's the biggest thing that I've found with Instagram actually is like I said again earlier people buy from people hmm. and I don't use my personal account now a lot of people don't even know I've got a personal account because I've just I purely just use GB yeah, Web and the films. Same, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think people do like to see the person ability and actually, like every now and then I'll post a selfie on the school run. It's like, oh, he's a dad, you know, yeah, oh, brilliant. Uh, you know that type of thing, or like you know, I'm, I'm going to grab myself a coffee. Oh, he just sits in Starbucks like the rest of us. Not like I'm any kind of yeah, yeah, no, or, no, 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 that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? But it's like just he's just, just like one of us. He's just like one <laughs> of us. Yeah, he's oh, a that real sounds person. So bad, doesn't it? But you know what I mean? Just doing normal things that people think that you just. One, you go and film weddings. It makes you accessi- happy. It's accessibility, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But they do some. They do. There is sometimes that. Oh, who's that? Guy? I remember being in the supermarket a few years ago, and, and with Sam, and there was you could hear people having a little chat, and Sam said, oh, "I've just heard him." They said, "Oh, is that Howard Wing, the singer guy?" They're all whispering about themselves. Yeah, you get that, that celebrity guy? element, don't you? You do, and it's yeah. weird because obviously, we're, like, we are just when you walked people, in today, because I've followed <laughs> you for so long, we've never yeah, met, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I feel like I know you. Yeah, so even it, has, exactly it works on me. Yeah, works yeah, on exactly. me. You know, that, that's yeah. the beauty in it with, with yeah. the socials. I mean, it's usually the funniest one is usually on like the day of the wedding where like I lay the mother of the bride going, I know him from somewhere. Yeah, and I go, yeah. oh, she's been following me on Instagram for a couple of months. Yeah. It's like, yeah, so yeah. It, it crime is watch. Have you watched crime watch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no comment, officer. <laughs> Slashing yeah, have we told the viewers and the listeners that Greg actually works with his mother-in-law? She's his second shooter. Oh yeah. I don't think I could right, ever do that. I don't think then. I could ever on, do then. that. Let's touch on that. <laughs> yeah, where do we start? I think I'd strangle her. She'd strangle me if it was my. The question is, there. your mother-in-law works with you. Yeah. On your bus- uh, in your business. Yeah. How how is it? How, do- <laughs> oh, how long have you got? How did, how did uh, it come about? <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, I tried to get my wife involved. Helen, big shout out to my wife. She's amazing. Yo, Hells. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, like I tried to get my wife involved and she just wasn't bothered whatsoever. And I remember having like a family dinner in the house one night and um, Paula, my mother-in-law, just started reeling off camera settings and I was like, you know that saying, throwing off shit and some of it'll stick type yeah. of thing. And that yeah. was kind of it because I, I love tech and all that yeah. type of stuff. So when I was, she was talking about like aperture on one of my new lenses and like, you know, shutter speed and I was like, oh my God, she's been listening to me talk shite for ages and it's obviously like it's obviously it's rubbed off on her somewhat yeah yeah, yeah yeah and um i think i had my first wedding coming up about two weeks after that and i said well do you fancy coming along and you know obviously she's not a videographer but mm. you know I've, I've taught her how to be a videographer i suppose to a degree but she's more my assistant really to be honest and she's just she's great on the wedding day to be honest she just Fantastic. she works amazing which is yeah. what you want yeah yeah yeah, yeah it, it does work really well like it's a strange dynamic uh, i think on paper it's it's a weird shift because i think Actually, at home, she's my mother-in-law and the kids' nan. Yeah. Whereas, like on the day of the wedding, it's like it's it's a, it's such a yeah, it's it such a shift. It's weird. She's your assistant and she accepts that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and she she's yeah. amazing and she she does do what. I what tell a great her way to, to get son, <laughs> great way to get power back in that mother-in-law yeah. son-in-law uh, relationship. Got to claw back somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and then when they get back home, like, hey, we're back home now, Greg. All right, no lip, yeah. no lip. <laughs> yeah, we're not on a but job no. now. No, but honestly, I, I think it's been to the point where I could, I could take my mother-in-law on a wedding. I think I think it would be all right. Yeah. Okay. You reckon? Yeah. I could never you look nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be all right. <laughs> No, but you know what? I think again for for me, what I found on the uh, especially at bride prep in the morning, a lot of the mothers of the brides will tend to like dither and they kind of oh, like they don't want to get stuck in too much because they don't want to overstep the mark. And 
Paula becomes the natural second mother. She's obviously not replacing like mother, that. but you, she will like right, you know yeah. if like the brides will say like oh my knickers are like up my bum. She'll just go right come here. <laughs> Yeah. And that type of thing. Obviously, the video yeah, yeah, can't yeah. do that. Wow. But, but it, she does take over, and, yeah. and that's great in that respect, you know. I, I get that from a you know as a as a male videographer kind of point of view. Yeah, I like work because I always like say this. I like working with female photographers because obviously, as a having a female presence, yeah, yeah. and my my fiance mm. second shoots for me. And oh, okay, amazing. Being a woman, she can do those things and get yeah. stuck in, and and they're more comfortable with yeah, that yeah. than than if the creepy guy with the camera starts yeah, yeah. offering. I to, wouldn't call yeah. you a creepy guy with a camera. <laughs> Thanks. Do you, do you know what though? It's, try, it's, it's, not to be it's funny you say that though because people do tend to. They don't think that we're creepy by any means, but it's like I'm but, gonna leave now. Yeah, you know, that's, you, it's you're like, with you girls getting like ready. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they wanna, if they wanna get changed, and you're stood in the room, and you can, you, there's that point where you go, "Oh, are you, are you about to? I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll just go because you can tell they yeah, want yeah, to yeah, ask, yeah. but they feel bad asking. Some of them don't. Some of them just drop, don't they? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, where the, where's the limit to kind of stopping filming? And that's what you say. Did he feel awkward because they think, "Oh shit, he needs to film this." Like, no, I don't. I've got to go now. I've got to go. So having, I always think just having a female present just to leave it. It's all that, and it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was. We are going to wrap up, and I was going to ask this question: um, of Would you do it again? Like having done it this, I didn't realize that you've been doing it for years. Yeah, running, so, yeah. Um, you kind of answered that, but I think is there will. anything that you've learned this time that you'd do differently next time? I, assuming you are going to keep doing it every year. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing it every year. Yeah. Um, again, it, it it's good for. I mean, it's it's good for growth, and it's good for the inquiries. Actually, just that alone, to be honest, quite quite simple, really. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to be carrying on doing it as far mm. as. Uh, Is there anything that like you've learned this time that you want to try um, next time or change? Or? Again, it's a bit of a boring answer, but not really. No, no. I've just found that like putting more money behind it and spreading it because I found that in particular there was. Um, see, I find, I find that, and I don't know about yourself, Adam. Actually, being a videographer, obviously, but where you're placed, I know. Sorry, Howard, uh, but where you're placed in the country, similar to us, like I'm in Liverpool. Yeah. We get work all over the country. Yeah. Whereas I found that southern videographers only really work so. on the, the south coast or in London. Yeah. Whereas like Scottish videographers only work in Scotland. Yeah. And like even to the point where I've asked associates to come down, like from Scotland, to come and work down in like, um, well, round local yeah, areas. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, oh, it's too far. It's like I'm going to pay for your travel, you know. <laughs> and you're like no it's, it's too far it's too yeah. far and you're like, we are in a good I get quite enough. a lot of Scottish weddings and quite yeah, yeah, yeah. Scotland um, because you are like you say you're kind of if you look at Scotland and England we're right in the right middle right in the middle really yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah it's never bothered me travelling I've, I've always wanted to do it makes yeah I've had some couples say oh we're down south in such and such a Cornwall would you like it's a problem would you come yeah yeah not a problem yeah yeah okay. absolutely yeah because they probably had it from other people so oh, I'm not sure if I'll travel <laughs> yeah yeah I, I had a previous bride of mine my Messaged me the other day. My cousin's getting married, um, and she's doing it down. She's based down south, so um, she really liked what you'd done, and she's struggling to find a videographer. Um, do you know? <laughs> do you, and she's she's come across these two guys locally. What do you think of them? Do you mind like giving her a bit of advice? Uh, and I knew I knew both of them, and I was like, yeah, they're both. You know this this guy's great at this. This guy's great. At they're, both, they're both good lads. Um, but but I do travel, you know. And she was like, oh dear. And I was like. Yeah, and because I was a bit like, shit, am I not selling this well enough? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like I've never n not travelled yeah. everything on my web like I've got weddings from everywhere on my website. Like I thought it was clear, but anyway, she was like, "All oh, right, oh well, if you travel, great. I'll tell her to get in touch with you." I do think that's a solid point because something that does come up with me a lot, and especially with the competition. People just assume that you're from here. That must yeah. be where you go. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of filmmakers in particular who I speak to, and, and one question that comes up a lot is, "How do you get destinations?" Mm -hmm. And it's like but I post about destinations. Mm. So ultimately, you're going to get those type of inquiries. But again, you know, sometimes kind of people put themselves in a box and I won't travel. I live in Liverpool. I'm only going to shoot weddings in Liverpool. I live in Blackpool. I'm only going to shoot weddings in Blackpool. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. So I think, you know, ultimately, that's the best thing that I've found about this job in this industry is that it can take you wherever you want to go as long as you yeah. allow it to. You know? Yeah, because we're deviating a little bit, but it's, I like this. Um, Obviously, being having a Scouse accent, do you find that that kind of boxes you in, whether you want it to or not, does that kind of box you into Liverpool-based weddings? Because I, I would no. say that you're proof that you can still go, doesn't matter where you're from, you can shoot wherever. Don't really film all in the world. 
Yeah. Which is a weird one because obviously with being in Liverpool, I mean, I've, I've done a couple like, over the last couple of years, obviously, but rarely get inquiries. For the reason I asked that is there was a vid- videographer that I went on his workshop years ago, Philip White, yeah, yeah. Um, who said that if you post videos, because um, uh, with wedding videos, you've got the speeches overlay, overlaying the footage. Yeah. So if you post a video and the speech overlay is like a Scouse accent or a Geordie accent, you're instantly going to attract that area. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was just advocating trying to use like neutral accents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, but it's the same thing. If if you're like, I'm got a northern accent and I sound different when I go down south, yeah, yeah. I stand out as being northern. Yeah. Um, so is there just, a neutral accent? It's weird, isn't it? If you think of the whole country, you've got English. Welsh, yeah. Scottish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's trying to be neutral. I, I get guess, it. I get absolutely extent. get the point. Um, I get, get the point. 100%. Yeah. Going back to Instagram, because you're, you're clearly brilliant at it. What Instagram posts have you had the most success with? A certain type of mm. post, or that when I do that post, that one always does really well, or it create an inquiry, or I get the most reach on that type of competition. Mine yeah. is the competition. Yeah, yeah. What other sort of posts are? Would you recommend people to you know to adopt? People love seeing key moments. So if you're posting, you know, obviously, for example, confetti shots and sparkler shots. They're very cliche and, you know, we've all seen a million of them. Mm. However, as far as I know, with the Instagram algorithm, only 10% of your followers are seeing your posts at one time. So if you've got, say, you get like, say you've got 10,000 followers, if 10% of those were to like your post, that's where you said before, where a lot of people who've got a lot of followers, they're not getting that much interaction Mm. because Mm. of, of the followers. However, a lot of people will post the same multiple times so I will I will post probably a confetti shot once a week or a sparkler shot once a week yeah. there is a fear that you think oh, again from a creative standpoint I don't want to post the same shit all the time because yeah. people are going to go oh another sparkler shot or another whatever yeah but if that works but, and then but it works and yeah I mean to be honest the biggest thing now is because Instagram we're going down the route of short form content and a lot of these creators now they're doing um, five second clips and it says how to get the best out of etc 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 read caption below so a lot of people are doing that now to get the views up because the videos haven't to loop to people to read I the see. comments yeah however it's going back to long form now oh, so yeah, is, instagram yeah. is allowing you to post longer videos now i actually come across a video i think it was an instagram live actually yesterday and it was like 55 minutes long wow and i was just like obviously yeah skip through that <laughs> but, yeah. but that's a bit too long obviously yeah. to watch on your phone but yeah they're trying to that's what they're pushing isn't they're it? trying to push longer form content now yeah um so yeah i mean i found that to be honest I don't post... So key moments are always good Key, key good moments, post, yeah. yeah. Short, short posts. I don't think posting... I'll never, ever post, uh, like, a full film. Yeah, it's good for us, that long-form um, sort of avenue they're taking, because you can post your, your, ha- your full highlight films. Yeah. Um, whereas I used to do that all the time. I used to put a full highlights on Instagram, and then when it got shorter and shorter, I got scared of doing that. Yeah, yeah. went to the 30 seconds, and yeah. now it's, like, encouraging you to go back to I the, think... I think it's, you know, it, I'm not saying stick to your guns, but people, like I said before, people get used to seeing what you're used to posting. Mm. Now, for me, a lot of people are posting trailers in like 9 by 16, aren't they, to fill the screen? Yeah. But I'll still post them 16 by 9. Like, you know, is that the right way I've just said it? But yeah, you know what I mean? Mm. I'll still yeah. post it I'll still oh, yeah, post yeah, it yeah. widescreen yeah. because I think that's the way it was meant to be filmed and that was the way it was meant to look. Yeah. So I think from, that's probably the only part of Instagram that I will kind of say is a bit purest. Whereas, like, actually, you know, as a filmmaker, it needs to be viewed that way. Yeah, Obviously, you know, you can't view it on a telly and whatnot. And a lot of people are posting it different ways. But mine, you know, I post short form content in like to fill the screen. Yeah. But I still post like my trailers and stuff like wider. Just be, stick yeah. to your guns. Yeah, because yeah. all these things come full circle, don't they? Anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But like I say, I'd never really post. I think if you want to keep your interaction up, I'd stay away from posting really long posts. Yeah. So right. even to the point now where like I've. Done, done very similar like with the behind the scenes now a lot of the behind the scenes content was too good not to post so I've now made a YouTube video from it now so I'll make like say a 10 minute video for YouTube which is the, the full behind the scenes and I'll cut it down to like 90 seconds for a reel yeah, and it. that will kind of build up your YouTube as well then because you're directing them away from Instagram and that type mm. of thing so, nice. Nice. so yeah cool, cool. Uh, to wrap up we always ask uh, everyone, same couple of questions. Uh, what is your most funniest, craziest wedding story? Funny, embarrassing, wacky story. Please from, let it involve from, your mother-in-law. From filming. 
Oh god. I, well, <laughs> okay. Well, I've got two then. I suppose off off the cuff. One actually happened on Saturday, but I'll get to that Saturday one in a sec. Uh, filmed a wedding in Liverpool, and on the top table there was a load of candles, and in between speeches, this one family member just wouldn't sit down. So in between speeches, she'd get up and give the bride and groom a cuddle, but over the table, and she basically <laughs> set her hair on fire. Uh, oh. Which was just absolute carnage. Just and I don't, check. I, Before we laugh, is she okay? She's fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah she's now wearing a wig. I didn't but, even yeah, no, really <laughs> uh, But I don't know if you've smelt burning hair. Oh, it's horrible. horrible. But it stinks. Yeah. yeah. So, I went to the yeah. photographer who set her on fire this year. Uh, oh, that's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Um, which the groom said it helped alleviate his nerves during the ceremony. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, every so, silver linings. But that's onto yeah. the back. Of, that's very similar to the, back, the story I'm about to tell you now. So this happened on Saturday and it was Paula. The second shooter, my mother-in-law. Right. So, during the ceremony, she starts having a coffin fit. So, I'm kind of on this side. So, the way we set up for the ceremony is one camera on looking at the bride, one looking at the groom. Yeah. So, she's on the other side of the room. So, I just said to her, I went, get out, get out. Yeah. So, she's left the room. And then she's come back in, and I think she's been sucking on a, a soother. Right. Right. So, then the coffin fit continues. And then she spits a, hoo- a soother right across the floor on this wooden floor in Pegford. <laughs> in the, the point, Great Hall. I'm just looking yeah. going, oh, Paul, and no, like, yeah. please, no. And I was like, yeah, I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. And then she, it, it happened during the groom doing his... Um, his vows. His vows. Oh. And uh, he said to... Um, Did it land in his mouth? <laughs> I wish. That would have been, that would have been that would amazing. Be but yeah, he, he just turned around and said, can you repeat that, please, because I didn't hear it. Because, and I was just like... Oh no! <laughs> I didn't know where to look, and then she made a big point of it. Then, like, oh, really? Sorry, I was like, they wouldn't have said anything. Yeah, yeah, just shut up. Yeah, but yeah, no, it was it was funny in the end. But at the time, I'm yeah, like, oh funny. no! And you can't you can't sack your mum in law, can you? No, oh, the God, flying yeah. holds I'll the the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! All right, that's that. That's good. Yeah, um, good, good stuff. That next one. If you could swap trades. And being be any other type of supplier in the wedding industry, what would you do? Hairstylist. And why? Hairstylist. Do you do that? Well, I've, I've been a hairstylist slash barber for twenty years, so yeah, I'm quite glad to be away from that now. Um, oh, I think I'd like to be a toastmaster. Nice. Just boss everyone around. Yeah. Don't think about Speeches. That no. Right. Get inside. No. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't wear a red jacket. Do. Oh no! I'd, yeah, I'd, yeah <laughs> probably not. though. There's always yeah, because I mean, you, when you work on a wedding, like I do, look around and go, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do your job. Swap, yeah, yeah, yeah. swap for the day. Toastmaster's one that's never appealed to me. Like, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I'm just like the boss and people around. Every guest that we have on leaves a question for the next guest, so we're going to ask you to leave a question for. Oh, did we get one next. from the last guest? Yeah, but um, before we before you leave a question, we've got one from our previous guest, which is James okay. Tracy. Um, if you had to start again from scratch tomorrow, what's one thing that you were told was important to do, but you would never do it again? Oh, that's an interesting one. Yeah. So when you start out, somebody says, you must do this. Yeah, so when you started out, something that you thought you, you had to do, like, was kind of the t- typical th- important thing, but mm. it was actually a mistake and you wouldn't do it. Hmm, interesting one to answer that. Take your time, I can edit out the pause. I know, yeah. yeah. I'd probably say, yeah, wedding fairs. And, I mean, you, you've actually just mentioned there as well, business cards. Like, you do tend to waste a lot of money on marketing material, let's say. Yeah. And, actually, it usually is a waste of time. And especially in this day and age. It's a lot of money that you don't need to spend at the start as well when yeah, you're trying yeah, to yeah. generate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I definitely think I agree with the, the wedding fair. Certainly one. like it's paid, a big, big type paid of wedding fair. If it's done right, 100%. Where it's, where, where yeah, it's yeah. like a... Because I got to see the, the wedding shows. Oh, you've got 50 minutes to go and sing. I'm never going to sell my services yeah, yeah, yeah. that way. But those small, intimate ones with the venue, some of those I think can they can, can be, be beneficial. Yeah. Yeah, 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 big wedding fairs and things 100%. like business yeah. cards and and pens with your name on. I tell you one for me either, actually <laughs> was um, it was a quite a big expense at the time. It was leaflets. I got like printed out loads of leaflets right. with my pricing on and my packages and stuff. And then because I was new, within three months I'd changed my prices. Yeah. So all they were. All them printouts were yeah, yeah, yeah. like invalid, yeah. and I was just like, "Oh sh- shit, yeah, gonna have to bin them." Time, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool, <laughs> Greg. Thanks very much, mate. It's Thank been you. an absolute pleasure Thank you. having you on the pod 
first one of 2024 and it's Thanks a bloody good me, it's yeah. a bloody yeah, it's good a great one. it's a great episode uh, and a, again like running a competition like it's just a great great marketing technique and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that thanks for coming on yeah look forward to seeing your competition on Instagram both of you oh, I'm gonna get <laughs> <laughs> no well, it's gonna go away to December now I really yeah. I'm chatting today I was like I'm, I'm I really want to really do it I'm, I'm never gonna do it I'm, I'm really I think, interested I wanna do it I feel like I'd be copying I it I think we could do it with our course maybe that's probably not, any, not a bad one to do so I know we talked about getting help on trying to learn things that or learn from people who've started off and made loads of mistakes and learned through that long process um, I just want to give a little bit of a shout out to our course that we do, Adam, because there's, if you are starting out or you, you're at the beginning of your wedding filmmaking journey and you kind of want to want to get somewhere faster without having to make all those mistakes, I think it's the perfect place for you. Adam's video section is unreal. How to edit your films it, faster, to how to film weddings, how to... I mean, I'm telling your bit here, but just simplifying the whole process with the kit and what to film... And then moving on to my section is the business side, you know, the networking. How do you build that network? How do you, how do you actually get the business when you've got that skill of becoming a filmmaker? Um, I so know, it's funny that you bring that up now, Howard, because it's currently on at fifty percent off for January, ah, which is we're still, which is we're still running a discount. Happy on it. coincidence. Um, so if you do, if you are interested, check it out. It's linked in the description it's below oh, and stuff. E it's called the Complete Wedding Film Business, so you'll find it. Or drop us a DM if you're interested. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So thanks so much for listening. We really hope that you found this episode insightful, inspirational. And if you did enjoy that, then please consider subscribing to us wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, we're a Think Wedding Business. We're also on YouTube and Instagram. So if you want to watch us, you can go over to YouTube and find us at Think Wedding Business. And the same over on Instagram to keep up with all of our future episodes. We'd really love you to subscribe and join us on this journey. And if you do like this content, please consider giving us a five-star review. It just helps us get seen and helps spread the word. So thanks again for listening Wings and we'll see you out. next time. Bye-bye.